<laughs> Hello, I'm Andrew from the Moywington Wushu Academy. This is Jake again. We've got Nick behind the camera over there, giving us the thumbs up. Uh, we're just going to make another video today about how we view the stance. So if people are sort of wondering what kind of Wing Chun that we offer at, at our school, and so these videos are meant to sort of give us an idea, give or give other people an idea about the kind of stuff we have to offer and how we see it. Uh, as I mentioned in another video, we've kind of been accused of not even doing Wing Chun by some people, and uh, there's people talking about how different what we do is. So Jake's already doing his Yiji Ken Yang Ma, which is good. So basically, the way we think about the Wing Chun stance is uh, that it's dynamic. We don't see it as being <coughs> stationary, such as the Yiji Kim Yang Ma is. If you turn, turn to Chut San Bu, uh, turn a little bit. Uh -huh. So once you're there, you've got this stance as well. And this has various different names. This one, uh, Chut San Bu, is we refer to it as 7-3 stance, is what my Sifu called it. And uh, you switch between that, so we do some turns back and forth. And when you do Junma, you transition from one side to the other. And if you just come back and stop in Yiji Kamima, you kind of got that there as well. When you start adding the footwork into it, it adds another dimension of the mobility of the system. So the whole system, from our point of view, should be actually really fluid and mobile. And in fact, uh, when we see a lot of people, and they're usually, I guess, beginners, people who haven't really gone so far in the system, I suppose, kind of think that you're going to fight like this, you're going to try to defend yourself like that. It's not really the case. Neither are you going to turn and do it like that way. So some people refer to this one as, in inverted commas, the fighting stance, and the other one, Yiji Kanamara, as the training stance, where we really don't like thinking of it in those terms because when you're actually doing something it's very dynamic and you wouldn't really generally stop in one or the other. You'd be in motion and have to you know, deal with whatever's coming as it's coming. So if you look at the way the forms are set out in the Sulam Tao, you do it all in this stance and there's good reason for doing that because the structure that you get from this stance, e.g. Kim Yang Ma, is essential for everything you're going to do. It's the platform from which you're going to deploy your Wing Chun in our terms. Next comes, so if you think of the progression of the different forms, this in your stance doing Su Lung Tao, and you're doing all your techniques in relation to that stance stationarily. When you get to uh, Chum Q, seeking the bridge, you're introduced, the very first thing you're introduced to is what? That's a moment. Seven. Before that. Uh, I think. Jun Ma. Right. It's the very first thing you do in the chum Q. And in our way of looking at the, the forms, it's because after you've got Yi Ji Kim Yang Ma, if you look at how the dynamic nature of the system is, the next thing you need to actually use your Yiji Kim Yang Ma is the Jun Ma to give it power. And the Jun Ma gives you both power out through your arms and your blocks, the power in terms of driving your footwork as well. Then the next thing is, well, in terms uh, of your feet, seven. the stepping. So the first, the next thing you get that isn't in the Salon Tao, obviously, is this short little step. And, uh, that step, even though you do three in one direction, three in the other, then you do another three in one direction, three in the other, from our point of view, you wouldn't be using more than one, generally speaking. Now, it's certainly not for this. So you're you're a bad guy over there. You're going to beat me up. But I'm out of range of you. And we're still in camera shot. <laughs> right, so he's the tough guy. He's going to beat me up. But he doesn't want to come in my range. So I'm not going to go sneak up to him like that. If you try pulling that stuff, you're likely to get punched in the head, and probably rightfully so. What that step's about is actually just 
reacting to something oncoming. So for us, that step is about closing and, as I mentioned in another video, bridging the gap. There's nothing in the arms that you do in the chum Q that's not already that already doesn't have a basis in the salon uh, tower. Uh, what you do get in the chum Q that's actually really important is the Jun Ma and the, the stepping. So from our thinking, seeking the bridge isn't a punch comes, sticking my arm out for in whatever way. That's not seeking the bridge for our terms, although you'll you'll get get some sort of contact as you seek the bridge. For us seeking the bridge is closing the range with your feet. And the way we'd want to do that is from where from longish range here, he can't hit me from there. I can't reach him either. But if let's say he's really the aggressor and he's going to attack me. So he comes forward as he's on his way in, I'd want to be then trying to close past his his attack. And the chunk you step facilitates that. But it's not the end of it. Once you're in past, you have elements of the Bill G that come into play. And uh, the Jun Ma drives the whole lot. So that's what uh, seeking the bridge is to us. And you, you sort of close that way. And uh, that really kind of, well, I didn't spell it out, but that really kind of gives you an idea of what our attitude to the stance is. If I'm going to be doing Wing Chun and he attacks, my stance is as I'm coming in and deploying whatever I want to deploy. If, let's say, I've knocked him out and he's sort of now no longer a threat, so I go over there and pretend not to be a threat, and I stop and try and look cool and stuff, I'm not really doing my stance anymore, I'm doing Chut Sambo. The Wing Chun stance for us is about mobility. And as soon as, while, while you're you're moving and doing whatever you're going to do with your arms and your feet are facilitating that, you're using your stance. Once you stop, you're either in your jitter your arm, so I don't know, let's say, you throw a punch that way and I come in with that and I come back this way. So I'm here, I, as I step in, I land in Chuck Salambo, I follow through with the, the jaw strike, and I land in the Yiji Kamen Ma, if he's then done, I'm not really doing my Wing Chun anymore. I'm just stopped in this structure, Yiji Kamen Ma. So for us, the stance is more mobile. So if I want to uh, push that sort of little demonstration a bit further, let's say you come in with here, you somehow deal with that. You keep going. Right? As I'm kind of doing whatever, keep going. I'll be switching in and out of Chatsambo or uh, Yiji Kimeng Ma through my Jun Ma and probably positioning myself. And that's not even saying anything about if you do it again, trying to get some sort of leg contact on him either. Because one of the things we'd really like to do if the opportunity presents itself is to. Oh, you okay? Yeah, good, sorry. Come on, come on. Uh, if you can just pan the camera down. We'd really want to be able to try and capture a leg and be getting some sort of contact on an arm and maybe hitting him at the same time. So that's what the stance is about for us. It's about engaging, it's about getting into an optimal position as an attack comes on. It's about facilitating grabbing a leg in whatever way, as well as positioning yourself. So whatever you're going to do with your arms is in the most advantageous position in relation to what the attack is. <coughs> so uh, I think that kind of covers our... Just in a nutshell what we think of the stance. Yeah. Cool.